Hi everyone. So in this video, we'll start uh, discussing the class of regularization strategies uh, that is defined by introducing parameter norm penalties, right? So as the name suggests, we have a norm that is a function of the parameters, and then we add a penalty as a function of that norm. So basically, the modified cost function j tilde of theta, the parameters, and the input x and the output or the training labels y, is given by the cross entropy or the maximum likelihood estimator cost plus a regularization cost, which is given by alpha, which is a regularization coefficient, times a parameter norm uh, regularizer omega, a function omega of theta. Now this alpha is typically between zero and includes the value the value zero and infinity, right? So close set from the side of zero and open from infinity. Zero corresponds to no regularization at all. Very large value of alpha corresponds to very aggressive regularization. So what it means is the following is that as you increase alpha, the cost due to regularization starts to dominate the overall cost. So you start sacrificing more and more of the cross entropy or the maximum likelihood estimation cost uh, for uh, satisfying the regularization, uh, requ uh, the regularization uh, constraint. Right, so norm means it's a, for example, an L2 norm, it's, it's, it's a norm that corresponds to some Euclidean uh, distance in a metric space. So, uh, for example, you have the L2 norm, the sum of the squares of the weights, L1 norm, the sum of the absolute value of the weights, and L0 norm is a norm that penalizes by the number of non-zero weights, right? And usually the choice of that norm will reflect a prior belief about how the solution will look like. So, for example, if you have an L0 norm, then you want to penalize the number of non-zero weights. So you're enforcing that many of the weights should be zero. If you have an L1 norm, then you, you want to enforce that the absolute value of the, uh, of the weights should be small. And as we'll see later in the analysis, actually L1 norm promotes also a sparse final solution. And an L2 norm uh, promotes a solution with, with weight magnitudes, whether it's positive or negative, that are small. And typically, the uh, omega or the regularizer is a function of only the weights, not the biases. And the reason is that there are far more weights in a neural network or weight parameters than biases, right? So imagine, for example, I have 100 neurons in a layer and 100, uh, a layer between 100 neurons and 100 neurons. That layer has 10,000 weight parameters, but it has only 100 bias elements. Right? If I have 1,000 and 1,000, I have 1 million parameters, fully connected layer between them, and 1,000 bias elements. So usually there are very few of these bias elements, and uh, it's typically the case that if you regularize them, you actually cause underfitting because it doesn't take much to learn the right values of the biases. Usually the biases learn the expected value that this neuron should have, and it doesn't take uh, a lot of training iterations typically to figure out for the optimization algorithm to figure out the right value for the bias. So there is no need in many applications to regularize the bias and usually it's uh, the uh, norm penalty is a function of the weight parameters, right? So the value of the regularization coefficient could also be different for different layers. In fact, the norm itself can be different for different layers. Now, there is a problem with, uh, with doing that, is that it's, it can be very difficult or expensive in terms of trial and error in designing the algorithm to find the correct values or the, or the optimal values or a good values uh, for the regularization coefficients. And the problem is that you cannot, you cannot simply make them learnable. So remember in ReLU when we said we can have variants of ReLU uh, with a coefficient that decides how to multiply the min of the value of x and zero, right? So max, so the, we said that you could change that coefficient to get absolute value ReLU or maybe even to get max out, right? Um, and 
then we said that if you don't know how to design it and you have enough computational power, then you could make this ReLU coefficient learnable. Here, you cannot make the regularization coefficient learnable because it's very simple. If I take the gradient of the cost with respect to that regularization coefficient, what will happen is that the, the optimization algorithm will figure out immediately that this regularization coefficient should be zero to minimize the cost, right? Because if the goal is to minimize the uh, training error, then we are basically adding cost here, right? So if I make it learnable, the network will learn to just set it to zero. So this is difficult to, uh, because we cannot make it learnable, so learning the right value for alpha can be difficult, can be tricky, right? Because there has to be a lot of trial and error and testing with some kind of validation set, right? So where is the feedback coming from that tells me how to choose alpha? Not the training data, but some data hidden from the training process, which usually we call it the validation data. Now, later in this section, we will see that actually something called early stopping that uses the validation set and the very common in uh, a very common regularization strategy for deep learning can you can uh, draw an analogy to l2 regularization l2 regularization is norm penalty with l2 norm you can draw an analogy um, through a mathematical derivation by showing that under certain assumptions actually early stopping corresponds to l2 regularization with a dynamic choice of the regularization coefficient Right. So in order to have an automatic selection of the regularization coefficient, you have to take feedback from data that you set aside. You didn't use it for training. Now, the other uh, uh, important comment here is that actually this norm penalty could be applied over all weights or maybe over weights in a single layer only or even weights connected to, sing to a single unit. And um, and we will see later that um, that actually there is there is a role for each of these, right? So the basic one is over all the weights. Weights in a single layer will basically reflect the case that um, uh, that you think this layer should not have large weights, and weights connected to a single unit means that you think this unit should not be more important in the learning process than a certain than by a certain amount so you restrict the influence of that unit right so even though all of these are norm penalty regularizers they actually serve different roles and as we'll see in the next section they serve different roles sometimes in the optimization strategy right so the regularizer at the end of the day will have an impact on the optimal solution or the final solution that you should get but also on the strategy that you use to reach that solution, right? So for different strategies, regularization will change the course or the trajectory of learning in different ways. So one intuitive way to think about it is that the third option here is basically to affect the influence of one unit. The second option here is used to normalize a layer and that, um, that will actually be related to how gradients propagate right um, as whether f forward or in in the backward propagation and also how the impact of early layers propagate uh, in forward propagation so typically weights constraining weights in a single layer refers to controlling that process and controlling the overall weights is basically a constraint on the simplicity of the solution right so you want it's a measure of complexity for the overall solution Thank you.